let me tell you a story about a company with almost magical powers that exists in a land far, far away. This company is one of the world's most important companies, capturing 60% market share in its sector. Yet, very few people talk about it. In the land far, far away, this company has achieved an average annual profit growth of 23.2% over the past five years. The profit margins for this amazing company stand at 43.7% and continue to steadily grow. However, lurking on the horizon are dangers for this remarkable company. Why else would it be trading at a PE of 16.3? It turns out that this wonderful company has bad neighbors. Very bad neighbors. Like in that movie when Seth Rogen and his wife move in next to a fraternity. Except that this fraternity is one of the world's most powerful military powers and has a dictator who has threatened its neighbor with a full-scale invasion on multiple occasions. So I guess Seth Rogen had it pretty good in his movie, for some of you, the penny has probably already dropped. But for those of you who are a bit slower on the uptake, I'm obviously talking about Taiwan Semiconductor. The world's largest chip foundry, if you're American and listening to this, you're probably thinking, What the heck is Taiwan? Isn't that a dish at the Chinese buffet? Then I'm happy to inform you that Taiwan is an independent country located on an island off the coast of China. Now that we have established that I'm talking about Taiwan semiconductors and the country is not a dish at the Chinese buffet, and that the company has a hostile neighbor, we can continue to look at what the company does and its financial status. But before we proceed, I also need to quickly mention one thing before you all comment the same thing. Warren Buffett purchased shares in Taiwan Semiconductors in November 2022 for approximately $4.1 billion. He later sold them due to the high geopolitical risk. Warren Buffett is undoubtedly one of the greatest investors of all time. When he makes moves, one should take note, reflect, and discuss. However, as mentioned earlier, I am a man with low morals and a receding hairline, and I don't give a f about what Buffett does. As long as there is no invasion from China. TSMC appears to be trading at a dirt cheap price. I'm not just a man with low morals. Unlike Mr. Buffett I'm also a man with a small wallet. That means I have to buy dirt cheap to grow my capital. I believe TSMC is still dirt cheap after its recent gains. Here you can decide for yourself whether to listen to Warren Buffett, the greatest investor of all time or an unknown stock operator on YouTube who portrays themselves as a stick figure. I would definitely choose the latter. Now let's jump in and take a look at what the company actually does. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, is the world's largest semiconductor foundry, specializing in the manufacturing and fabrication of integrated circuits, ICs. The company provides advanced wafer fabrication processes and technologies for a wide range of customers, including fabless semiconductor companies, integrated device manufacturers, IDMs, and design houses. TSMC services include manufacturing various types of chips, such as microprocessors, system on chips, SOCS, memory chips, and other semiconductor components. The company plays a crucial role in the global semiconductor industry by enabling the production of cutting edge and high performance chips for various applications, including consumer electronics, telecommunications, automotive, and more. All electronics in today's society contain semiconductors. So if you're using a smartphone, a laptop, or a TV, including for watching certain content, you have TSMC to thank for it. We can almost be so bold as to say that TSMC is an enabler of the world's electronics. As mentioned earlier, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is the world's largest semiconductor foundry. By large margin, the company holds a market share of around 60% in the global semiconductor foundry market. Its closest competitor is Samsung, which has approximately 16% market share in the same industry. TSMC is big and strong while Samsung is somewhat smaller and weaker. In terms of more advanced chips, Taiwan Semiconductor indeed holds a market share close to 90%, which is quite remarkable. When it comes to advanced semiconductor chips, TSMC and Samsung can be considered to have a duopoly in the market, as they dominate the industry and have a significant influence over the production of advanced semiconductor technologies. A duopoly is approximately what Colombia and Mexico have with their agriculture. TSMC serves a mix of technology companies and semiconductor firms as its major customers. Among them, Apple is the largest customer for TSMC, relying on the company to manufacture the chips used in their products. Apple accounts for approximately 25% of TSMC's total revenue. TSMC has been a key partner for Apple in producing various processors for iPhones, iPads, and other Apple devices. Based on the latest report released on April 20, 2023, the most advanced semiconductors, the 5 nanometer and 7 nanometer chips, 
contribute approximately 50% of the revenue. What we also observe is a clear trend towards the dominance of 5 nanometer chips in terms of revenue compared to 7 nanometer chips. This is because the market is rapidly demanding the most advanced chips, in terms of revenue segments, smartphones and HPC, high-performance computing, are the largest revenue drivers. Together, they account for over 78% of the total revenue. What we also see in the chart is that HPC, but especially smartphones, experience significant declines quarter over quarter. However, TSMC and several other semiconductor companies are anticipating a bottoming out of the consumer electronics market and expect a stronger finish for the market in the second half of 2023. I assume people want to buy new smartphones so that they can now also put on their Apple VR headsets and watch their favorite videos. TSMC expects the year-over-year -year revenue for the full year to be flat. Which is still a strength considering the significant challenges the semiconductor sector has faced throughout the year. A sharp decline in consumer electronics and high inventory levels among its customers. The general economic downturn has been evident in consumer behavior and their choices in spending money. Households have cut back on expensive purchases such as new smartphones. My belief aligns with TSMC's management that consumer spending will pick up again. How does the future look for TSMC? As mentioned before, their largest revenues come from their most advanced chips. So the question we should ask ourselves is how far away is TSMC from launching a new and even more advanced, smaller, chip? The production of their new 3 nanometer chip is already underway, and the demand is extremely high. Apple has already reserved 90% of the total production capacity. However, TSMC continues to steadily increase its production capacity to meet the tremendously high demand from the market, based on the expected revenue from 3 nanometer chips for the year. The projections are around $4 billion in revenue for 2023. The revenue from 3 nanometer chips is expected to grow significantly in 2024 and 2025. The company's historical performance has indeed been impressive. Over the past 20 years, the company has demonstrated strong growth in profitability, revenue, and margins. The growth is almost as impressive as the growth we are currently seeing in BMI in the USA. Over the past 10 years, the company has achieved an annual revenue growth rate of 14.1% and an average profit growth rate of 17.9%. The company is also highly profitable and demonstrates strong margins across the board. Time and again, the company has shown its ability to effectively invest its capital for future profits. When it comes to the balance sheet, the company is rock solid. Just as rock solid as Kathy Woods becomes when she sees an opportunity to buy a struggling company without profits. On a side note, we must also mention that Kathy Wood bought shares in TSM on June 13th. This is a major setback for all us shareholders. We just need Jim Cramer to come up with a buy recommendation. In terms of historical valuation, TSMC is currently cheap, although it is much more expensive than it was six months ago. The stock is currently trading at a P.E. ratio of 17, compared to the 5-year average of 25.2 and the 10-year average of 20.4. Even though this year is expected to be a year without growth for the company, I believe that TSMC has a long runway of growth ahead in the next 10 years. The company has performed exceptionally well for a long time. The valuation is acceptable at the moment. I started building my position in 2020 and significantly increased it in the fall of 2022 when the stock was trading as if the company would go under tomorrow. Currently, TSMC and ST Microelectronics are my largest positions in my long-term portfolio. If you want to learn more about STM, I have made a video about the company on my channel. The major risk associated with the entire case is its geographical location. But the company is working hard to diversify its production globally. Two giant factories in Arizona are under construction. TSMC is also establishing production in Japan through two factories. During the summer, we will also receive information about a potential factory in Europe, in the land of the Wiener Schnitzel, specifically Germany. TSMC is indeed a significant company with strong financials. The potential risk associated with the geopolitical situation and the relationship between China and Taiwan is a valid concern. The impact of any conflict or disruption involving TSMC would be significant, given its crucial role in the global economy and the semiconductor industry. The international community, including the United States, Europe, and Asia, recognizes the importance of TSMC and would likely take measures to protect and preserve the company's operations. However, Predicting the outcome of geopolitical events is inherently uncertain. It's important to consider potential risks and monitor the situation closely. That's all I had to say about TSMC. Well, maybe not everything. But that's what fits in this video, at least. I'm stock market operator Bob, 
and TSMC is my largest holding and has been for quite some time. I hope you learned something about TSMC from this video. On this channel, we sniff out stocks that are trading at an obvious discount. If you appreciate what I do, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to leave a comment about what companies you'd like to see in the next video.